morning. And I love, I love worshiping with you. I was standing right here next to Dar- Darwin Bow Services. You ever been in worship and you just feel like you sing better than you do? Come on, it's louder. And you're like, man, I just feel like I'm getting it today. And then like you're a little bit late or a little bit earlier, the music's turned down a little bit, and you're like, nope, that wasn't me. That's what I just felt right now. I, I felt like I sang better, and then when I realized that I didn't, I felt envy. You know what I mean? I was, I was breaking a commandment. Thou shalt not covet. You know what I mean? Like I just, just Darwin's got more gifts than, than I do. And so, hey, welcome uh, to our nine-year anniversary, uh, Stir uh, Week 4. Hey, before we get into that, you see kind of a living room uh, setting. It is small group weekend uh, this weekend. We're launching small groups that go live. We really believe that life change happens. Uh, in the context uh, of relationships, and one of the ways that we do relationships here at Action Church is through small groups and through our teams, and, and I was actually thinking this week and meeting some of our team, actually Pastor Tyler and some of the pastors presented this idea of instead of me sharing a bunch of stories on life change through the nine years of Action Church and through relationships and through different things, why don't we just hear from some actual action members, so I'm going to invite uh, several people up uh, in just a moment. Before we get there, a couple things coming up. We got Baptism Sunday next week. Yeah. It's going to be a, a, a powerful time. Really excited about it. Uh, it's going to be the first time ever we're doing baptisms in service. We're going to have the baptismals inside our locations. Uh, we're going to be baptizing people in service next week as a part of worship. We're going to worship together. I'm going to teach briefly, and then we're just going to celebrate people uh, giving their life to Jesus throughout yeah. service. And then the next week, uh, on February 12th, uh, we're starting a Lights, Camera, Action Week 1, and uh, it is my favorite series of the year. We see hundreds of people give their life to Jesus every single Lights, Camera, Action. If you've ever been waiting to invite a coworker, a family, a friend, uh, somebody close in your life to church, uh, that is the time we're going to have popcorn, we're going to have soda, uh, we're going to have characters, and then we're gonna, for four weeks, we're going to take uh, movies uh, modern day parables, we call them, because uh, that's what Jesus taught and taught in parables. We take modern day parables, more importantly applied with the word of God, and we just we have a ton of fun and really powerful, practical messages, and we see hundreds of people meet Jesus. And so I hope you're planning to attend. Uh, if you come to the 1030 service uh, at an LCA weekend, there's a good chance you're going to be in overflow or sitting in traffic for a long time. We'd love to have you. If you like it full, hey, I like it full. So some pastors say, hey, don't come to the 1030. Come to the 1030. Just make sure you like to be packed in like some sardines. You know what I mean? And so it will be packed here uh, uh, at LCA at the 1030. So maybe noon or nine if you like a little more space. A couple more things. Um, I want to talk to you uh, briefly about something that's going to sound a little bit heavy, uh, but it's really not uh, as we've gotten through it uh, in regards to uh, Pastor Eddie. We've been on a health journey with, with Pastor Eddie uh, over the past couple of months, uh, and we've ruled out brain stuff. We've ruled out heart stuff. It really has to do more with a, a kind of nervous system and adrenal uh, uh, glands and hormone stuff, and so uh, we're going to give him a, a few, a couple months at a kind of a different pace here at Action Church, so you're not going to see him on the platform. He's fine, his heart's fine, his head's fine, Nelson's fine, like there's nothing going on other than uh, Pastor Eddie for nine years has been marrying everybody, burying everybody at every hospital and running businesses and family stuff, and so there's some stuff going on physically that we need to take care of. So pray for him, maybe leave him alone a little bit, let him rest. Uh, and hopefully it's a picture that we value people here at Action Church way more than what they perform or what they provide. And so we love you, Pastor Eddie. Look forward to you being back. If you know Pastor Eddie, he always says, all gas, no break, with, with a little break in there for a little season. Um, uh, last thing before we get into Stir Week 4 is... Uh, uh, our expansion total, we still got people that are, are, are giving, uh, but as of today, uh, we've received over $1.2 million for our expansion offering, giving in December and January. Just so grateful for a generous church. Uh, and what's cool is, as the church has matured and gotten older, we really understand the, the difference between returning what's God's, the 10%, and giving. Uh, used to, uh, in December, we would just have people kind of rename their tithe. We'd have a big expansion total, and nobody would give to tithes and offerings and this year we had a record in tithes and offerings, our biggest month in the history of the church, as well as 1.2 million over and above. And so you are a generous church. You are a faithful, obedient church. I was just talking to one of our partners in Iran where we smuggle the Bibles. Remember we talked about that. We have literal drug dealers smuggle in Bibles. They've all been delivered. And so your Bibles, have, we did, 
we gave $35,000 of the expansion offering to smuggle 10,000 Bibles into Iran, and so they've already been delivered, uh, and uh, Christians there are getting the Word of God, and so, so it's just one small project that we're able to be a part of, so thank you, thank you for that. Um, we're going to get into week four uh, of STIR, and uh, week one we talked about stirring our, our personal relationship uh, with Jesus. Week two we talked about uh, stirring our gifts we use the coffee and we have some things settled or separated. We got to stir the ingredients God's put in our life. Last week, we talked about Thanksgiving. Come on, somebody. Jesus was here. And we talked about stirring our faith. And we talked about that there's some things that need to happen on the inside of us. We need to believe God for more. Today, I want to talk about stirring our relationships. I really believe that who you're connected to, who you're in relationship with, will set the path and the trajectory of your life. And we see that with, with Jesus. I, I believe some of the greatest stories of life change in the history of our nine years as a church and in the next nine years of our church will be about community and relationships. I really believe that somebody, some group, some team, some outreach, some situation connected to relationships can and will change your life. And we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about what the church has been as the vehicle in, in changing lives and how relationships have changed lives. But I, I want to make sure that we always have the appropriate filter that Jesus is the cornerstone. He is the foundation. He is what's gotten us through nine years. He's what will get us through the next nine years. And as we hear these stories today of life change, that Jesus is the foundation of it all. I want to do that from John chapter 1. Just read five verses and then I'll invite uh, everybody up here with me. It says, in the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God, and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God, and God created everything through him. This is talking about Jesus. And nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. This light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. What I want to make sure that we, we see today is that we will see life change in the context of earthly relationships. We will see context and life change in the context of the local church, but the only thing that can initiate and bring about true life change, the common denominator of all these stories is that Jesus is at the center of it. Yes. In the center of our nine years, in the center of our next nine years, that Jesus is the only thing that will bring light to the darkest places of your life. That Jesus is the foundation and Jesus is the filter. But catch this, Jesus prioritized relationships. In fact, I would submit to you today that the, the, the greatest impact that Jesus had in his three years was not in, who he did, well, not in what he did, but who he hung out with. That he did so many great things while he was alive from 30 to 33, so many great teachings and miracles, but exponentially more was done by the 12 people that followed him, and those that followed him. Jesus actually pioneered this idea of discipleship and of relationships, that it is who you're doing life with and who you are raising up and who you are investing in that will do more than you will even do in your own life. He demonstrated not just the power of God, but the power of relationships. And so I want to talk about today, I want to talk about what God has done in the context and the history of our nine years and what God has done in relationships, in small groups, and through life change through the local church. And I have some friends joining me today, so if you would give it up for several families that are coming up to join us this morning and share their story. It is a welcome, welcome, welcome. It is small group weekend. And uh, I thought we'd just host a little small group on the platform. And so um, you hear from me every single week, and I thought it'd be better for, uh, to not hear from me. It's my anniversary, too, and so I'm taking the Sunday off. And um, <laughs> what I want to do today is uh, thank you so much, everybody, for, for joining us. And, and uh, how many of you are really grateful that you're not them right now? Like, these are, <laughs> we were meeting last week, and they're like, like in front of everybody? Like, yeah, the whole, everybody's going to be here. Uh, it's just us having a small group with a couple thousand of our closest friends. And um, what, what I want to accomplish today is for you to hear uh, stories of people that are, are just like you yeah. and see pictures. Some of them have walked really, really tough journeys. Some of them, you would say, have walked different journeys. It's not a comparison of what God has done or what your action story is or what your testimony is. It's a faithful picture of what God did through your story. And my goal today is that you would see something up here like, oh, 
I've been there. Oh, I've felt like that. And that you would see that God has the ability to change it, to shape it, to use it. And oftentimes that happens through the body of Christ and through relationships. And so I would love today, um, just, just briefly, um, to, to hear your action story and then kind of kind of unpack that and dive into that. So I don't know who wants to go first, but I just I would just love to hear your action story. This is Testimony Sunday. Anybody have Testimony Sunday growing up in your church? You hand a mic and you'd never get it back. And so I want to remind everybody up here, we got somebody with a button back there that will mute you if you start talking for 74 <laughs> minutes. Y'all know the lady I'm talking about. If you grew up in church, if you gave her the mic, you were just, service was two and a half hours. And so, no, we're going to have a great time. I, I would love to hear your, your, your action story, just whether it be relationships, small groups, how you got here, just what, what has God done in your life in the context of church life here at, at Action? Let's go first. I'll kick us off. Okay. Uh, I'm Jarrell, representing Oviedo. There we go. Ov family. Love yeah. you guys. Oviedo is losing their mind right now. We're both locations nuts. right now, so they're, they're standing full ovation for sure. Uh, but no, I remember um, a few years back, um, I had gone through a season where I had recently lost my job. Okay. Um, still wrapped up in, in some sin in, in, a, in a few different areas, if I'm being honest. And uh, I knew there was a time in the summer where um, all these things were happening, and then one day I was living with some people who were like, man, let's, let's go to church. Like, yeah. this is... So eventually we found church, we found action, ended up at Haggerty High School, um, and immediately I, just, immediately I just felt something different. It was a weekend, Summer Loving uh, Message by Pastor John. Okay. If you've been here before, you heard Pastor John speak, you know, once he speaks, it's over with. Yeah. He came, he was rapping Will Smith on the stage, and <laughs> just as cool as he could be. Um, but... Heard the message, uh, kept coming back, and I knew one of the biggest things. I was super isolated. Okay. I knew I wanted community. I knew I wanted um, some some people to be around, some accountability partners. Yeah. Um, Pastor Trent started using this phrase a couple weeks ago called, uh, he said, crowd to community. Um, and it really resonated with me because for a long time I was part of the crowd. Yeah. And I decided to get into the community. Um, I went through. Come on. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. Went through action steps, started meeting some people, started um, joining some small groups. Um, I, I said from the jump, I'm a teacher, I said from the jump, I'm not going to do students, I'm not going to be an usher, because I'm introverted, you got to say hello to everybody that comes in. <laughs> and if you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. Now I'm so an usher true. lead and I lead students. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and leading a students is the most intimidating thing in the history of the world. Like, I still get nervous if I walk into a cafeteria with students. I have to remind myself, I'm 38 years old, I have a full-time job, and I don't care what you little punks think. So thank you for serving in students. Yeah. No, grateful I get to do it. And then I uh, went through a few more small groups, went through Freedom. Freedom is an amazing curriculum. Yeah. Shout out to my Freedom leaders. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Prayer Force, got to go through Prayer Force with some, wow. with some awesome people. Um, and just having those community, that community around me, something I prayed for for a long time. Um, and getting connected and having those people in my life that pushed me to be all that God created me to yeah. be has um, been a huge blessing. You said something first service that, and uh, maybe elaborate on just for a second or, or not, but you talked about you had, you had to take a step. Yeah. Like yeah. you went and introduced yourself to Pastor Trent. Like you joined a group. You, like, I think oftentimes people sit back and, and wait and say, well, there's nobody, nobody's connecting to me. Like I remember you saying last service, like, was it just something you knew you needed? Like, what gave you the boldness to take that step? Um, yeah, I went out and sought it out, and um, they make it hard here at Action not to talk to somebody. Right. Somebody's going to be yeah, wherever you go. That's true. So, yeah. um, but no, I um, went to Action Steps, went through Action Steps, saw Pastor Trent in there, and sought him out, shook his hand, yeah. a couple other guys, and um, made it a point to go to, to meet people and introduce myself to Good. people and, and put myself Good. out there. No, I think uh, we talked about this first service, but... This place will always feel big. You know, Action Church is several thousand people at multiple locations. And, and that's one of the one of the, the knocks, if you will, is a mega church or it's too big. You know, we only say that about church. Like, I, I go to an Alabama game, I go to a Magic game, you go to an NBA NFL game. Nobody ever is mad about a crowd. <laughs> oh, there's just too many people here. No, it's awesome. Because you went with the closest people to you to something that you were passionate about. So it just feels too big because you don't know anybody. And if you don't know anybody, that's your fault. Because we have groups and we have teams and we have greeters. Somebody opened the door for you today. That's somebody saying, hey, I'd like to be friends. 
and it takes a step, but it does take two people to be in relationship, and we've, we've extended the invitation, and I just promise you this, the stories you'll hear today, the stories you'll hear, you will never fulfill all that God has for you by doing it alone. And you will never get all a church has for you just by sitting and attending. I love to worship. The power of God will show up and your life will be better by attending. But it will never be completely fulfilled until you find the proper relationships and plug into the body of Christ. Man, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll move on. But I remember Pastor Trent telling me when we were talking about this, he's like, man, I can't get rid of this guy. Like he's here like sun up to sundown. Like, like, he's, like he's like all the way in like in everything we're doing. So man, I just I'm, praise God for what he's done in your life, and just the blessing you are to our church because of it. So, man, thank you. For Glory to God for all of it. Yeah. Who wants to go next? Okay, great. Uh, my name is Alba. This is my husband, John. <laughs> we have they're, been... they're new. <laughs> we, we've been, attend... we've uh, been married for about 20 years now, okay. and uh, three amazing boys, uh, Jonathan, Matthew, and Elijah. <laughs> And um, my action story is uh, we were going through a season, okay. and um, I was laying in my bed one night just crying, broken, my world shattered. And I said, God, whatever it is that you have for me, like I'm in, gave my life to Christ. Wow. And um, that night I Googled churches in our area, and I came across the podcast for action. And I sat there on my porch for four hours on a Saturday night listening to four sermons. I didn't see a stage. I didn't see a pastor. It was a message that God delivered wow. straight to my soul wow. that I needed at that time. And um, the next day I got up. I left the kids home sleeping. And um, I came to church. Yeah. I turned the corner, and this place just opened up. And I mean, like you say, the parking lot preaches before the pulpit, yeah. and that's what happened to me. Yeah. Uh, I came in, I was treated like family from the beginning, and um, fast forward to that, I had a meeting with Pastor Eddie, and um, he called in Pastor Ingrid and said, I would love for you to surround Alba with community, with women that are gonna love her and see her through this season, and that's exactly what happened. I got a little happy, I joined 17 small groups. <laughs> <laughs> One every day. Yeah. One every day. Yeah. Got my kids involved in the city groups. We didn't know anyone here. And just quickly, we just got connected. Yeah. And, and I was telling John, you've got to come check it out. And eventually, he would come here and there. And um, I asked him repeatedly, can you come and meet with me and Pastor Eddie? He said that he is willing to meet you whenever you're ready. And one day, I asked him again. And he said, all right, I'm ready to go check this out. Let's go talk to Pastor Eddie. Yeah. So then I met with, you know, we met Pastor Eddie, and um, he continued, he started to listen to my story and, and what I was going through. And, and to be honest with you, man, at that point, I was already done. I, I, I was only doing this just because she wanted me to do it. Yeah. Um, so I was like, you know, let me just hurry up and get this over with so that she could see that it's truly over, and we'll move on from there. Wow. Um, but I spoke with Pastor Eddie, and he began to feed into us. He began um, giving me spiritual uh, uh, prescription. Um, and... Uh, um, then from that point on, um, I started joining small groups, started getting into that. Um, and, you know, like there's a saying, there's, there's a show that I watched that it said, um, want he, I'm sorry, you check the show Chosen. And the Chosen, it says, when they asked Mary, they asked her, you know, one minute I seen you was one way, but now you're different. You know, you're different. So in that same context, I was one way before I got to action. And now I'm another because God was tugging in my heart and yeah. telling me, come to church. Yeah. You know? What I love about, <laughs> we talked about it, like, it was, it's the power of God. Make no mistake about it. There's, yep. no, there's, no, there's no brand in the kingdom of heaven. Right. And so when we talk about the church, it's, it's the church, and we're just a local expression of that, and we're just vessels inside of what God is doing. So, but, so it's the power of God, but it was a key moment where, where Pastor Eddie, and you could put Pastor Eddie with a small group leader or a friend or a mentor, a, a, a fellow Christian uh, believer, brother, like he challenged you and said, this, this is not what you're going to do. Like, right. like he, 
he had a tough conversation yes. with you. Yes, he did. And it was so it was not it wasn't all fun. It wasn't hands raised. No, it wasn't this it wasn't LCA eating popcorn. It was somebody saying you're not going to do this. Right, exactly. He was speaking life into me. Yeah. And I didn't. It was from somebody who I least expected it. Yeah. Right. He spoke. He spoke life into me. He spoke scripture into me. Um, and there was a seat. There was a part. It was like about a month or so that I went to service every Sunday. And I started doing that because I heard a sermon from you where you said, even if you don't feel like coming to church, still come. Because one day you're going to receive. And so I kept coming. I kept coming. I even raised my hand a whole month straight when, for a salvation call. Just to make sure. Just to make sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's fine. Just to make sure. God, please. You know what I did last night. Exactly. <laughs> Do it again in me. Do. Great. That's so powerful. I, I, wish, we had, I wish we had more time. Uh, and I... Like join one of the, if they're leading a small group, join it and hear, hear more, like for real, like the, what, what God's done in your life, um, just from the little bit that I know is, is a picture of redemption and grace and restoration. Wow. And so, yes, so grateful for you. <laughs> Who's next? Okay. Hello. I'm Melissa. This is my husband, John, my son, Johnny, and my daughter, Aubrey. We're back here at Winter Park. I would have to go back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Some of those are my South friends. That's got to be my South friends who are here. That's awesome. (laughs) Our story really starts with the fact that we grew up going to church every Sunday. It was really kind of routine for us. And, you know, his mom was really a spiritual leader in his house and my grandmother and mine. And so it was something we did because it's what they did. And so we were kind of tagging along and it became something that really was out of obedience. But we really never had our own independent faith. And unfortunately, when they're not honking the horn to meet you outside and rustling everybody up on Sunday morning, the first time we didn't have to go to church, we chose not to go to church. And, you know, it wasn't until that season of college when, looking back, we probably needed to be in church more than ever before that we had really let that not become a priority in our life. And fast forward a few years later, we get married and we have a new house and we have a toddler and a newborn and life is better than it has ever been. And we have great jobs. And it was easy to think we don't need church right now. Things are really, really good. This isn't maybe the time, but there was this desire to be really great parents. And so we had this checkbox in our mind of what it meant to be good parents. And we thought, oh, maybe we should do church. Like that sounds like the right thing. Good parents do. Let's do that. Right. And it started off with that motivation. It wasn't something we felt like we had time for. We were very intimidated by it being very awkward and not knowing anybody. So when we did actually go, this light bulb went off of like, this is what church can be. And we felt like we were doing it for them and they're over in the, the kids team. But then Little by little, we realized it was actually us who was transforming in a way that we were kind of pouring a foundation over all those younger years so that ultimately they could stand on their own foundation one day. And at some point, there was this bit of kind of routine that we started realizing. And looking back, it's because we weren't getting involved. And it's really obvious now because we were starting to live out that Sunday only faith. And although they were having fun and we were getting fed, we weren't doing anything beyond that. And that's when we started to realize that what we want them to have in the future, we have to start modeling that now. So good. And that there really won't ever be time, that you have to make time for the things that are important. Wow. Wow. And I wanted them to see that we're willing to sacrifice an earlier morning, despite being busy. We're willing to sacrifice an evening if that's what it means. And yeah. busy can be our badge that we wear For to sure. a fault. And how are you utilizing our time now and how we're using that is something that I'm seeing that now is paying dividends because, you know, yeah. they're here and they leave. And one of the things I'm most proud of is how we really prioritize that independent faith so that it wouldn't be the same you know, trouble that we kind of got into is yeah. we each were baptized when we were ready. We each joined a small group when we were independently ready, and we each started serving when we were independently ready. And so we tried to never make it that here's what we're all going to do, and here's what we're all going to do. And I think, you know, Aubrey yeah. might be able to explain it best of kind of how she's living that out now. Yeah. Um, so Tell for us about me it. personally, um, when I was, you know, growing up in a Christian household, it was so easy to just think like we're a package deal. Like, they go to church, I go to church, we're good, like I'm right. good, I just kind of have to sit in the auditorium, be there, and we're good. Um, but I feel like as um, I started to enter high school, um, me and my brother both attended Momentum, and Momentum was such like a shock. There was no parents, it was just the students, <laughs> and it was it was so fun to just be like by myself, and 
um, when the worship came on and there were just students just like with their hands in the air, like on their knees, like on the ground, like they were just completely letting go, completely like in their own zone by themselves. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know what to do. My parents aren't here, like, right. you know? And so um, I just, that's kind of when I realized like I can have my own individual faith so and um, uh, now getting ready to transition into college, which is can be scary. I have a confidence now because I know that I'm wow. going there by myself, but yeah. I'm not alone. Yeah. And so. Come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. um, and I just feel like it makes it so much easier now to invite people to church because now it's like I like fully believe what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm like, believe me, like this is for you. This is for everybody individually. Like, yeah. please come with me. And so just seeing my friends like thrive and do all these things is amazing. Yeah. I want to uh, pause just for a second. Yeah. Give her. She's probably going to be preaching here in a few years. That's better than <laughs> more eloquent than anything I've ever said. Um, there's a couple of things that, that, that I'm thinking about. Uh, one, the, the win for our student ministry is that. Uh, the reason we uh, have such a focus on our students serving and being in groups and not necessarily a, a youth group, but just involved in the life of the, of the church in a very similar fashion to adults is because when uh, our kids grow up, we want them to love Jesus and love the church, not just what their parents did or not just a, a youth ministry or a youth group. The, the whole win is they would develop their own personal relationship with Jesus. And so you are a picture of that. Uh, and um, uh, a picture of, I, I believe your story is like, did you guys come to Momentum before? Were you guys involved in the church before or did they come to Momentum first? Yeah, we were actually at another church across town and things were really great, but we had an invitation to come to Momentum, which the other church wasn't offering a summer yep. opportunity. And I remember it so clearly because my son specifically, he met me out in the parking lot, and he's all sweaty. He is, yeah. I'm thinking, well, I don't know what happened in there. Yeah. I don't know if I want to know. I, just, I, I stay out of those environments. <laughs> and he, he said, he's like, Mom, this church is hype. Yeah. And to see him so excited about church, that's yeah. the dream. That yeah. was what we were looking yeah. for. And so, of course, we came to see what all the hype was about. And yeah. it was Songfest shortly after and other things that just seeing them excited to go to church, I said, this is how you build a sustainable faith that when we're not there, this right. is they all theirs. Yeah. So that's the dream. So my dad and I, it was 2012, 13, I think we're in Destin, Florida somewhere, or uh, up in the Gulf Coast somewhere, and we talked about this idea of uh, elementary, middle, high school, and college kids finding Jesus, because most, most uh, uh, faith transformations happen before you're 18 years old. It usually takes a, a pretty tough life event post-18 for, for an adult to feel like they need Jesus. Uh, with no, with no background. And so we know we have a, a window, a short window to the highest uh, chance to, to reach people. But we wanted to reach kids, uh, middle school, high school, college, and their parents. We wanted to reach the kids and for them to bring the parents. Because if you just reach the kids, you're a very poor church. And we had church had not started yet. And so we need the parents to fund the vision. And we've seen thousands and thousands of these stories of, of kids and students and college kids and young adults uh, finding the Lord here, and then parents wanting to be where their their kids are. And so I know there's so many stories here at Winter Park, Oviedo, Sanford, and so just a picture of kind of a, a dream that me and my dad had a year or two before church even started, that we would see this. And so you guys really are like a fulfillment of prophecy, a word, or, or what God gave us of, of hundreds of times over of what God has done through families. So thanks for sharing your story. All right, last but not least, the Harveys. Uh, my name is Tyrone Harvey. This is uh, my wife, Jenny. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're here from uh, Winter Park. We, we were serving at South Orlando. We're back here at Winter Park. Yeah. Uh, glad to be back at the mothership. Yeah. <laughs> so a little bit about our story. I came here to action in 2018. It was uh, our third date. It was uh, by invite. It was kind of like date. a date. Yeah, third okay. date. Yeah. It's kind of like a, uh, a test, I believe. A test, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we got to it. I passed the test. I'm, I'm yeah. here. <laughs> So far, so good. Yeah, I, I remember that first service. It was a, a Christmas Christmas Eve service. Okay. I came in and I, I saw that I had been attending church all my life. I came into action and, and just from, again, the moment in the parking lot to walking through the doors, I felt like home. But it was uh, inside, these, in the, inside the walls of this auditorium, I felt uh, completely different. Again, I had attended church all of my life 
and I never really felt what I felt inside of here. Um, so from there, I decided to attend Action Steps, uh, actually before Jenny did, even though she invited me. Uh, she was, I guess, watching to see what happened to me. Y'all seem, like seem like a very competitive family. There's a lot of, uh, yeah, go, keep going, go, sorry. So fast forward, we, ended up, we got engaged in 2019 and, and then got married in 2020, but um, we actually got married twice in 2020. Uh, the first time was at marriage night, you know, That's we're only awesome. engaged. We weren't we were yeah. married, but we were at marriage night, and we actually got married here at church at marriage night. In the, at, in, at Winter Park. Here at yeah, Winter okay. Park. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes, in, pa in Pastor Eddie's office. <laughs> uh, and then we got married about six weeks later, like the big reception. And, yeah. and the reason is uh, there was a little bit to that story because I have two previous marriages, so I've been divorced twice. Uh, Jenny's parents have been divorced. They've been married and divorced several times. And when we walked into this, we had put in so much work. We had been attending small groups. We went, to, uh, we went through the Simbas program. We met with our mentors, and we wanted something different. Uh, you know, it's kind of like that definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting wow. a different result. And we didn't want to, me personally, I didn't want to take marriage lightly again since I had done that so many times. So we, you know, logistics with housing and rents and stuff like that, we had the opportunity to just, you know, move in together and start the family before we were married or to get married. So in addition to that, we saw that our three kids were watching our every step wow. because they had also been through this journey yeah. uh, as well. So we knew that they were watching and we wanted to make sure that our first steps into this God-centered marriage is, uh, was going to be successful. Yeah. So we knew we couldn't do it alone, so we needed God in, in, you know, right in the middle of it. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks for letting us in, too. That's a powerful story of, of redemption. In a, it was redemption by God, restoration by God, but you making some different decisions. I think that's what I just heard. It's like, yes, God's power redeemed this story, but you, made, you, you said, I'm, I got to make some different decisions this time, or yeah. I'm going to end up to the same place. Like, we're, like, God leads us, God sustains us, God redeems us, but we, we got to make some better decisions, and you guys had principled decisions of putting Jesus in the center. That's powerful. Yeah. That's powerful. What's, what's even cooler is uh, we actually started leading uh, marriage small groups. Um, awesome. So, you know, we led Fortify. Um, and, you know, I, if you would ask me if I would have been leading a marriage group, like, no, <laughs> why, would I, yeah. why would I do that? Because God said so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and all of our, I think that's what's powerful about the, the local church is that uh, we are a body of Christ. And your story, God never wastes an opportunity. Like all the, the, the pain that's been caused to you or caused by you can be redeemed and help somebody else. Yes. And so I think that's like, like you, you're, what you just said, you're a picture of like, hey, we're not gonna waste all the stuff that we had to walk through. We're gonna allow God to not only redeem that in us, but allow that to be used to be a redemption story for somebody else. And so. Um, I'll just say like in regards to small group, Sorry, my voice gets cracky when I have to speak in front of all these people. Um, just us. These, they're yeah. not even here. <laughs> just, okay. Um, but in regards to small group, like, it wouldn't be possible without connecting to other married couples who've been doing it for a lot longer than we have. Yeah. We have things come up, and I think in your past, you did it alone. Yeah. You, you fought through a marriage and didn't have anybody to really rely on, where we have these connections and these wonderful families that we can connect to with anything that may come up, so and then good. they can rely on us too. So it's so been good. a huge part of, I think, our marriage and our yeah. relationship. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, we're, we're out of time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of them in just a second, but hold on just a second. I, wanna, I, want, I want you to see, um, and we, we, we would need 100 people up here for everybody in this room to see their story, but the prayer was is that you would see something in your family, something in your journey, something in your story. It's like, oh, like, if God did it for them, he can, he can do it for me. Um, there are people that are walking through similar things. I guarantee you somebody in your row, somebody in the group that you're going to join, somebody in the team that you're going to join has been through something similar. That's one of the gifts of a large church. We've got a lot of stories. And uh, don't allow your story to be wasted. Uh, use it for the glory of God. But also, if you're, if you're still in the middle of that story being written, I guarantee you there's a mentor, there's somebody who's maybe just a little bit ahead that you can say, man, if, if God did, I, I, I may not have faith yet, but I, I can believe they did it for you and how, and what, what are the steps to take and what can I do different? And so hopefully today was a picture, not just celebrating what we've been able to be a part of as a church, 
but maybe for you personally seeing a picture of what God uh, can and, and will do in your life. And so thank you so much for sharing your story. Can we give it up for them? You guys were amazing. We're going to get out of here in, a, in just a moment. It's our nine-year anniversary. I just want to close this one thought, and then I'm actually going to give uh, everybody here uh, online and uh, Sanford and Oviedo a, a chance to receive Jesus today. I, I really feel like today's a call for you to be a part of the body of Christ so that you can either receive the benefit of it uh, in a time of healing or, or need or play your part in providing that for somebody else. And I was talking about uh, this this weekend uh, with Gabby, uh, and if you've never met uh, Gabby, she is uh, uh, my wife and the biggest Bible nerd that you've ever met in your whole life. Like every every everything is, uh, we, we talk about the Bible, well, this is my day, well, Matthew 4 says this, and it's like, oh, great, okay, great. So we're talking about anniversary weekend, and, uh, and uh, she's like, well, what's the biblical number, what's, what's nine in the Bible number mean? And I'm like, that's really the first thing you're, yeah, yeah, you, just tell me, she loves Jesus way more than I do, and so, and I, and I love him pretty good, like, I'm pretty, I'm like, at least a solid seven, eight out of ten, and so um, we're talking the number nine, and, and I really think it's, it, it uh, it's for this season of our church. Number nine in the Bible is a number of finality, uh, of completion, of, of finishing but not being done. And so it's, it's a completing of a certain season or a phase or a setting. And so as we are in our nine-year anniversary, I feel like that's a, a perfect picture for a couple of reasons. I think we've got some, some new vision with new locations, new, new ministries, new outreach ideas, new schools, new, new things that we believe God's put on the inside of us. I think it's saying, hey, you, you did the one, first one really well, but you're not done. There's a, a new start. This phase one, nine years is done, but what do the next nine look like? And, and what I want you to get today is what, what does your next season look like? And I really feel like in the context of our church, what does it look like here? Here's what I know. In a sermon or a time together talking about the importance of relationships, I know one thing. You, you need a relationship with Jesus to settle eternity and to live fulfilled in this life. You need relationships from other people to help you through tough times, to celebrate the good times. You, you need healthy Christian relationships. And then you need to be using your life, not just for your life, but for the glory of God and for the benefit of others. If you don't do those three, you will not be fulfilled. I don't know at all, but I've been around doing this ministry thing for about 15 years and this action thing for about nine years. I know you need Jesus, you need relationships to help you, and you need to be in relationships to help others. And so I really feel like this anniversary is a fresh start for maybe hundreds of you today saying, maybe I need Jesus, maybe I need some help, I need some freedom. I need some fundamentals. I need some, some, some tools in the toolbox, this spiritual thing. I need, I need something for my marriage or something for raising my kids. I need, I need some help. Well, that help usually comes from the Lord or from relationships. I think there's others of you that need to provide some help. God's healed you. God's restored you. God's set you free. And now is a season. You're gonna need, still need some help and you definitely need Jesus, but now it's your time to be a part of what God will write in the next nine years. How many of you are called to help create these stories? To speak into marriages, to speak into the future of our students or our kids. I hope today on our nine-year anniversary is a call for you stop, to stop spectating and get off the sidelines and actually use your gifts. When we to stir those gifts. There are things that have been settled for too long on the inside of you. Receive Jesus, receive some help today or offer some help. That's the challenge. I want to close by always, anytime we've gathered Action Church, nine years in a row, we saw about 15 people give their life to Jesus in the first service and we were just talking about relationships and small groups. What I know is the Holy Spirit's been here through worship, through the reading of his word, through prayer and through these testimonies. And I want to give you an opportunity right now across all of our locations that the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you. Today is your day of salvation, your day of recommitment. I want to give you that opportunity. So if you would bow your heads and close your eyes, I want to give you an opportunity to meet Jesus today or recommit your life. To be very clear, Jesus is the perfect Son of God, the second part of the Trinity, living a perfect life because you could not, dying a sinner's death in your place. Like he took what you and I deserve 
The greatest exchange of all time happened, our, our sin and shame for his righteousness. That no longer does God the Father see you as you are. He sees you as he sees his son, Jesus. Through the filter of the cross, him dying on that cross gave you access to grace and mercy, forgiveness and salvation. The resurrection of Jesus gives us access to victory over sin and over the grave, that death has lost its finality. What do you and I have to do? We have to receive him as Lord of our life. We have to surrender to give up control. For some of you today, this is for the very first time ever, ever. Others of you, it's a day of recommitment. Say, Pastor, I wanna, I wanna help others. I wanna lead a group. I wanna be on the team. I, I wanna help create those stories where you can't give something away that you don't possess. If Jesus is not in control of your life, you've missed the first step. So let's settle that today. Nobody look around, every head bowed, every eye closed. I wanna give you an opportunity to meet Jesus, recommit your life. If that's you, and you wanna pray that prayer and start that process of becoming a disciple today, make that decision. Would you raise your hand right where you are and say, I need Jesus to be Lord of my life. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, just 15 to 20 on the floor. Yeah, hands still going up. Always amazes me on services like this where not traditional, not just a sermon. We've gotta have 20 hands on the floor, a few more in the stadium. God is doing something in your life today. It's just for you. It's the greatest decision you can ever make in your entire life. You are settling eternity if you are giving Jesus control and your life will be different because now you're no longer in charge. Anybody online in the stadium, a couple more going up, see you. You can put your hands down. If you raised your hand, would you, would you pray this in your heart as I pray it out loud? The words are, are that important. It's the fact that you mean what you're saying today. You're surrendering God is calling, you're surrendering to his control. Pray this in your heart. Say, God, I love you. And God, I thank you for saving me. God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I'm saved only by your grace and I repent from those sins. And I do confess with my mouth this morning and believe in my heart that you, Jesus, are Lord. And God, I give you that place in my life, complete and total control. Have your way. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And God, I pray for all of us today. We thank you for all that we've been a part of in nine years, but we are expectant for the next nine. Completing well one phase and launching into a new one. God, I pray that we would stir our relationship with you. We would connect with you and disconnect from the world consistently this year. God, that we would stir the gifts. God, you put something on the inside of us. We're created on purpose and for a purpose, and we will never be fulfilled until we find it and utilize it. So I pray that that would be a year in which we get off the sidelines and use our gifts. God, stir our faith. Give us fresh vision and revelation and uh, uh, dreams about what you will do in and through our individual lives and collectively as a congregation and stir our relationships. God, give us people to help us. God, and for people that we're called to help, all for your glory and for others' benefit. We love you. We praise you in this place. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody at Action Church said amen. And amen. Can we celebrate the 25 or 30 people just in this room made a decision? We're so proud of you.